thank you very much. Uh, on December 10, uh, 2020, President Trump brokered a historic peace agreement between Morocco and Israel, the fourth peace agreement that President Trump has been able to help bring about between Israel and an Arab and Muslim nation in the last four months. Less than two weeks later, I'm thrilled to be standing next to our Moroccan and Israeli partners in Rabat to open the door wide to a new era of cooperation. Morocco and Israel are making huge strides on their commitments to resume full diplomatic relations, promote economic cooperation, and to reopen their liaison offices very quickly. This visit is enormously productive so far, and we have more to come tonight and tomorrow. The Moroccan and Israeli delegations have several MOUs and agreements that are ready to sign, and more are being drafted in a very wide range of sectors. I am especially grateful to His Majesty, King Mohammed VI, for his visionary leadership, which is setting Morocco and the region on a very exciting course forward. This trip has captured the imagination of Israel, especially the over one million Israelis that have Moroccan descent. Uh, people were saying that uh, the Emirates is now the, the largest destination for Israelis to travel to. On the plane over, we were talking. I think Morocco is going to be giving it a run for its money very, very quickly. Morocco is one of the United States' oldest and closest allies. In fact, we just observed our 243rd anniversary uh, of Morocco's recognition of the United States in 1777. Our relationship has never been stronger. Morocco was the first country to recognize America, and it's something that uh, we will never, ever forget. Uh, every U.S. administration since President Clinton has affirmed its support for Morocco's serious, credible, and realistic autonomy plan. By recognizing Moroccan sovereignty over the Western Sahara, President Trump is rejecting the failed status quo, which benefits no one, and instead is driving toward a just, lasting, and mutual, mutually acceptable solution, one that uh, makes sense and one that we believe has the chance to work to better the lives of all the people there for a very long time to come. Genuine autonomy is the only feasible option, but it will take work. We urge all parties to constructively engage with the United Nations to move forward through the negotiations. We look forward, we look forward to opening a U.S. consulate in Dakhla to further advance diplomatic efforts and enjoy the tangible benefits to Moroccan's southern provinces and beyond. When President Trump took office, the Middle East was in a state of turmoil. His bold foreign policy vision has created new pathways for all nations to rise beyond the decades of instability and crisis, moving them away from the perpetually old conflicts. And what President Trump is doing is he's ushering in a new era of tolerance. Uh, we had a lot of uh, radical extremism. We had a lot of separation of people where old, um, old ways were being perpetuated in a non-constructive way. But as we open these countries up to each other, we're seeing that the people are starting to get to know each other. They're starting to reunite. And it's leading to a much greater understanding and much more pursuit of common positive interests in the world and a lot of positivity. So uh, we've seen a tremendous shift in that direction. And I do believe that it's really just the beginning of what we have the ability to achieve. It is now time to put the region and all of its people on a truly transformative path towards stability, security, and prosperity. And with Morocco and Israel now together, that is very, very possible and many, many more. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to introduce uh, my good friend, Mayor Ben Shabbat, who's done a fantastic job on this and all the other uh, files that we've been fortunate to work on together. Thank you. In